hello fellow podcaster today we got lucretius and the nature of things i'm just going to explain the basic concept and how lucretius or i don't know how to pronounce the name but lucretius is a freaking genius of his time and it's going to be a short little concept explanation of what he says it's not going to be everything because it's very complicated but i'll explain the stuff that he came up with so again the dude was a literal genius he pretty much cra- predicted gravity and atoms First of all, he, he definitely defines it within his book that all things are created by tiny little particles. And things like metal, which are hard, have higher density of the particles. And stuff, softer stuff like wool or wood has lesser density of that particle. And every natural occurrence that happens around us, such as storm, lightning, rain, the waves, all of those things are created by patterns or random happenings within the different rules of the universe and that's pretty much what he says and it's absolutely genius because what he talks about about these atoms about these particles is pretty much equivalent to modern physics and that's insane he was a roman ancient roman science i mean philosopher slash scientist because back then they were pretty much the same thing so in other words the dude's a genius like, he's crazy about it. And also, he made a very controversial opinion of what, back at the time, which is the gods can do not or cannot um, interfere with our world. Basically, what he says is he doesn't reject the gods completely because back then, in ancient Rome, that would have been literal suicide. However, what he does is he says, okay, um, every single one of the gods are... You know, they got power over that domain, but they don't, they can't really control it. Like, Poseidon doesn't control every single storm and whatever, um, blizzard or whatever happens with the sea and tsunamis. He doesn't do that. All of these different natural occurrences around us simply happen because of the random occurrences within the patterns of the world. And he also explains that the world is infinite, like the space is infinite. And it stretches on far beyond everything, which is very, very cool. And he also states that one day, our Earth, on its entirety, will die, will be destroyed. Because, of course, since everything else does, he doesn't see why not. And this also is exactly right, because, you know, in, in a couple billion years, the sun's going to go poof, and our planet's going to go poof alongside it. So, in other words, yeah, he predicted, like, the next like several centuries of science and I think that's pretty insane considering back in Rome most of the things that were going on was number one worshiping the gods number two going to war and conquering other countries and number three the emperors so I find it really really surprising that Lucretius back in that Asian time predicted half of modern physics about the world and atoms and the infinity of the world and i kind of, this is actually almost like a question from mine but is this guy like one of the first guys to kind of suggest like this god exists but um they can't affect the real world kind of thing because the thing is like you know nor most a lot of philosophers back in this time and also a lot of philosophers back in like the renaissance like and also like back in the 18th, 19th century, like Descartes, for example, they're all very faithful to God, most of them anyway. Like even Socrates, the most critical innovator and thinker and questionnaire, um, he believed in God too. He believed in an afterlife. He believed that the soul and the body and the soul is born before the body and then when he dies, the soul goes to the underworld or Hades. Like, like he believed in God. But this guy, he's, he's saying that the gods, although they may exist, they do not have control over modern life. And that's like like really interesting concept that probably didn't exist back then that could have gotten him killed. And I found that that all of his theories were really hard to read. Like his book's not easy. It's not like a woo kind of read. It's a more what the heck is he trying to say every line kind of thing. But once you do kind of get into the vibe of it, then you really start to understand this guy is possibly one of the greatest critical thinkers of all time. He questions everything and comes up with a logical answer for everything. He makes patterns within the world and within the things that he sees and tries to 
see what makes sense. And I think that's how he came up with so many of these like things like atoms. Like he just based on that one concept of everything is made of smaller denser particles and all of and then he expands upon that like okay so wood is hard metal is harder therefore metal must have higher density and wood must not it's true and then he goes on to expand that to say then everything that happens in the world must happen because these atoms interacting with each other and creating patterns and happenings which is also true in other words, what he does is he finds a pattern and he starts expanding upon that logically. And, and someone who's, I think that's really, really cool, especially again and again, I must emphasize, he's from ancient Rome. This guy predicted modern physics. It's super duper cool. And yeah, I think, I think really this really shows the bones of science. Because, you know, in the physics class, they go, um, um, Newton's law of relativity and equations a lot of the time but really what physics truly is is seeing and understanding the patterns of how the world operates and that's really the core of physics not you know calculating everything although that is obviously a big part of it and i think that i think lucretius really helped me get into the concept of physics and explain everything really well and i really 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 found it interesting so if you want your own little dip in your toes in lucretius um, go ahead and buy the book or find a book somewhere. It's 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 a it's an interesting read at the very least. I can say that it's like a nine out of ten because it was hard, but it was really interesting. And like always, your plot quester Aaron, the plot quester. It is a pretty great book. I liked it, but you know it isn't a, you know like it isn't a wheel of time. Haha, <laughs> foreshadowing on a different review that's coming. But yes, it's it's a great book and. He, he's a genius like there, there's really no other way he, he ascended into the future saw the future came back and told everyone everything but no one believed him we do now though have a great day